You might be wondering, how on earth can somebody make an eight minute video on what to do in an elevator? You're only in there for a few seconds. That's what I thought too until I began to write this, and I realized there are so many elements that create either a good or a bad elevator ride. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what they are and share some timeless advice for being a well-mannered and respectful elevator passenger. I live in a residential high-rise, which means I ride the elevator anywhere from five to 12 times a day. With all of these rides, I've noticed some strong examples of both poor and admirable elevator etiquette. I've broken these down into eight simple categories, which I'm going to explain to you now. The first thing to consider when it comes to elevator etiquette is whether you should even take the elevator or not. Few things will irritate your fellow passengers more than taking the elevator just to ride one floor. If you're going up or down just one or two flights, take the stairs if you're able to. The only exception is in some corporate high rises where the staircase is actually fairly inaccessible. And of course, if you're unable to climb the stairs. Spatial awareness is the most important thing when it comes to riding an elevator with others. So there's a lot to talk about here. Being in an elevator is kind of like being at a urinal. You shouldn't stand right next to someone if there's an opportunity to leave a gap. First, always face the door of the elevator. Facing the back or making direct eye contact with your fellow passengers can make them feel unnerved. In a busy elevator, be mindful of others who may need to get out from behind you. If you're standing at the front, step out of the elevator and hold the door open to let them out. If you're at the back and you're getting off a crowded elevator, say excuse me and give others the chance to get out the way rather than just barging through them. Please note, wearing headphones will always reduce your spatial awareness, so be sure to take them out or turn off the music when getting into an elevator. If you have a lot of luggage and a crowded elevator arrives, be cordial and tell them you'll wait for the next one. The closing doors of an elevator produce another set of social conundrums for us to navigate. Let's start by talking about holding the doors when they are not closing. If you allow a lady to enter the elevator first, or anyone to whom you wish to show respect, hold the doors open with your arm as they enter. This shows consideration that you won't let the door close on them. You can also do the same when you step out of a crowded elevator to let others off. However, deliberately keeping the door open when it's trying to close is a bit more of a complex matter. If you are in the elevator and somebody wants to get on but they're a little late, I think it's polite to hold the door open for them. But only if they're immediately at the door, not if they're 20 yards down the corridor. If you want to get on the elevator and you're a little late, don't stick your hand or your foot to try and jam the door open if there are other passengers in there. It's not gentlemanly to make others wait and you can just get the next one. The act of pushing the elevator button is a simple gesture of courtesy that many people have forgotten. If you are the first one in the elevator, kindly ask the other people who get on behind you which floor they would like. However, it's not necessary to do this with every additional passenger who gets on as the elevator goes up or down. When the elevator is crowded, whoever is standing nearest the buttons becomes the button pusher. That means if you join other passengers in a crowded elevator, you shouldn't reach over them to press your floor. Simply ask the person who is nearest to the buttons, would you press 17 for me? If you and a group of strangers have been queuing for the elevator at the lobby, allow them onto the elevator first if they were there before you. This applies most of all in lobbies where there are multiple elevators. Even if you are standing near the elevator that arrives first, let them on first. However, common sense applies of course. If you are standing right by the elevator that arrives first, and they are standing seven elevators away 20 yards down, then it would be a little strange to just stand there. Remember, etiquette is all about preventing awkwardness, not creating it. Now, if several of you are getting out of the elevator at the same time, who should go out first? I believe in letting everyone off before you as a sign of respect, provided it's not inconvenient. So if you are standing at the front of a crowded elevator, just get off first and don't stand in their way. But if it's just you and one or two ladies, allow them off first. The elevator is somewhat of a vacuum where outside discourse should take a pause. This especially applies to mobile phones. Nobody in the elevator wants to be forced 
to listen to your conversation. And it's also rude to the person on the other end of the phone because the signal is going to be affected by interference. So if you are on a call, let them know that you're stepping into an elevator and that you'll call them right back. Everyone will be grateful. What about private conversations that are happening in person? Well, unless it's something very trivial, I recommend pausing the conversation when you get into an elevator with others. Again, nobody wants to be subjected to your personal business. And in an office scenario, it could be a big mistake to continue with the conversation. For example, if you are discussing a meeting or business objectives, you might be unaware that a visitor or a client is also in the elevator with you, and they might be very interested to hear what you have to say. Now, what about conversation with the people in the elevator? Saying hello to people as they come in and wishing them a good day as you exit is, in my opinion, a common sign of decency that, again, has sadly been forgotten. You don't need to say hello and goodbye to every single person who gets in and out. But if you're riding the elevator alone, say hello to the person who gets in next. This especially applies in residential buildings when you're riding the elevator with your neighbors. This hello and telling them have a good one, it just makes the world a more pleasant place. It's also totally fine to engage in a little small talk, but bear in mind that some people will be more receptive to this than others. Some small talk openers might be a comment about the weather, a compliment on what they're wearing, or in a hotel, asking them where they're visiting from. It's necessary to read the room, so to speak, and the body language of your fellow passengers. And it's totally fine if you don't want to start any small talk at all. This final point of elevator etiquette is one I saved till last because people do it every day, it drives me a little crazy, but I've never seen any etiquette guides talking about this. When you are entering or exiting an elevator, many people stand there right at the doors and they've already started moving as soon as the door starts opening. This results in a very awkward situation if there's someone on the other side and you almost bump into them or you get too close for comfort. The solution is simple, don't stand right at the door. If you're waiting for the elevator, stand at the side of the door. And if you're getting off, allow a one or two second delay to check that there's nobody right there before you walk out. Gentlemen, as you can see, there is a whole lot to elevator etiquette, but it mostly comes down to just common sense. It's all about being considerate, aware, and respectful of your fellow passengers. I want to hear from you in the comments if any of the points in this video struck a chord, or if there's something else that you've noticed people do in elevators that you find particularly distasteful or irritating. If you wish to continue on your journey of leveling up your etiquette, perhaps I can suggest my video on gym etiquette. Just like this one, I break down eight simple rules so that you can be a productive and well-mannered member of the gym. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you tomorrow.